and welcome to another edition of Tent Count. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Michael Montero and Doug Fisher. Gentlemen, we have PBC all over El Paso. On Showtime at night, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. takes on Marco Reyes. Then on CBS in the afternoon, the American debut of Carl Frampton defending his IBF 22-pound title against Alejandro Cobrita Gonzalez. Doug, is Showtime the last entity to realize Chavez Jr., the, the, we, the, the train has left the station, the bandwagon is now empty? All he's got is his name right now. Um, and maybe that's enough to do solid ratings, decent ratings. I'll be curious to see what those ratings are. Um, from what I heard, the, the Tomas Adamek Chavez fight, mediocre. those ratings were, oh, they were just mediocre? mediocre about 700000 I know he can't sell anymore. I know he doesn't sell tickets uh, in, in the Southern California area. Um, let, let's see how he does in El Paso. Um, it's pretty close to Mexico, but... Friendly commission. Right. Well, I tell you what, when you, when you perform the way he's performed um, and you get the results that, that, that he's garnered in the ring, um, it's even diehard fans of his father, it's very hard for them to, to, to support him. I mean, he has to show us something. And even if he knocks this guy out that he's fighting in, in, in four or five rounds, that doesn't prove anything. Because they're literally, they're fighting a chump. They're fighting a guy who is undersized, um, doesn't have a lot of power, and has um, very, uh, a very mediocre skill set. So it's, it's literally the give-me fight. It's literally the soft comeback opponent. Um, and it'll be fascinating to me to see if, if Al Heyman and, the, and, and his organization and, and Showtime, because it looks like that, that's the network that Chavez fights on. If they can rebuild um, what Bob Arum and Top Rank uh, and well. HBO and a number of, <laughs> of uh, Spanish well, language networks, it took them years to Doug, build up. I'll never forget talking to Bob Arum, as only he could tell me. Uh, the Monday after that, uh, in April, he said, Eight years of hard work. Eight years. They yeah. effing blew it. I can't believe. Here's the thing. Think about it. It was a lot, there was a, a huge body count. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of yeah. you know guys from the Midwest and no hopers and and building him up and 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 giving him the right training situation with with Freddie Roach and the Wild Card Gym where he really did maximize his ability. Because honestly, I didn't think he would ever win a major world title. And he but actually Michael, did that. He surprised us. Yeah. Don't you think though he's been completely exposed for what he is? Yeah. I mean, he's basically well, Mexican butter bean. He's an well, Aram creation. Like he's See, not actually, that fat yet. Uh, oh, yeah. He, yet, might, he yet, might get yet, that fat. He might yet. get that fat. He's a, he's, a, he's a guy who does have some ability. He, he can't does. fight. What's missing is the desire. The desire the, to the train discipline. 100. The discipline and the dedication to the sport. And then once you get in the ring, the desire to really put it down. That's missing. This fight is three months to the day from that beatdown he took against Fonfara. Is that enough time to heal, to mentally and emotionally get yourself together, and then to get a proper camp in? And I know this opponent isn't the greatest opponent. He's a middleweight. He's undersized. I believe he's only fought in America once, and that was on the Chavez-Lee undercard. So, like you said, give me opponent. Yeah, I know it is. He, he, he should look said, good against this he guy. He should look great against this guy, right? right? If, if this goes past three or four rounds, it's a moral loss for you Chavez. You know, what I find interesting is I was in Verona for the Matisse Provodnikov fight, but I knew a lot of people that were at the StubHub Center when there was like this downpouring of corona coming down from the rafters. Paula got hit in the baby. That's great, yeah. good. But I, I, all I'm gonna say is this, I'm not saying that Chavez is about as popular with the Mexicans as Donald Trump, but he's toxic. No, I'm, I'm telling you, the Mexicans are embarrassed by this guy. And what I find interesting what they're doing in El Paso, the PBC, they're, they're known to give away tickets. I mean, they, they really take free boxing for all to a whole new level. That if you buy a Chavez ticket, this is a new one with the day-night doubleheader, that if you buy a Chavez ticket, you get to go to the Frampton fight for free. Oh, you so get the Frampton fight is at so night and Chavez? No, no, no. Frampton's day? in the day on CBS. Oh, so right. that's a two for one now. Okay. Uh, if you buy a Frampton ticket, you still have to like go and buy a Chavez ticket. To me, it should be the other way around. Really? Re yeah. I actually think Chavez should be free. And then Frampton, who's really Frampton's a Frampton's a real fighter. That no. guy can fight. No, I but like here's the him. problem. Th this is a duck. Th Alejandro Corbrita. Senior might be better than junior. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, there's I'm no being doubt about that. It, well, here, somebody yeah. pointed out that on the fight poster, yeah, they that's put not the a father. picture of junior. They put the that's the former featherweight champ, Cobrita Gonzalez Sr. And here's the thing. They had to go with that young picture of senior because it, if they showed a picture of junior, 
This kid is prepubescent. He's a baby. He's, He's a, a baby. baby. He's I mean, baby. Steve, you and I have seen him. I've seen yeah. him. I, I, he hasn't gone through puberty yet. I mean, he's just, it's... Michael, uh, last year... It, that's another gimme, really. And Flafting doesn't need gimmies. Michael, I did a story last year on him. Um, one of the fights is at Ponce de Leon's gym, right on Whittier Boulevard in Montebello. And then for that fight, I don't know if it was the Kim Jinx, he probably lost to a journeyman. I mean, this, this, to me, is a mismatch, the jackal against this kid. Yeah, absolutely. It's a mismatch. It's uh, a showcase fight, right, for an Irish guy in El Paso, Texas. But... This is another one where if, if Frampton doesn't get the win early, it's a moral loss. He's got to look good for this thing to work, right? Uh, on, on this undercard is Chris Ariola taking on Fred Cassie. Uh, I've been told for a while that if he wins this fight, Chris Ariola, believe it or not, folks, he, he's going to get Deontay Wilder. That, you that, think? That, you think, yeah. It, it, you don't need to be Einstein to figure that out. That'll be his out. third shot yeah. at the WBC, the WBC heavyweight WBC title. WBC wants him to get that belt, they man. Really they do. really, really want it. You think want they him. do? I'm not sure, but I, I think to me this is an Al Heyman PBC special. Uh, Mexican heavyweight, drive some ratings September yeah. 26, recognizable name, and I think it's a very good style for Deontay Wilder. But with that said, if Eric Molina can buzz you, what about an in shape Ariel? Does he, does he still have enough? No, but okay. does he do it? And I don't this mean is round. Chris Ariola we're talking yeah. about. Does he buckle down? And here's another thing. Even if he does, for this fight, buckle down and get serious and train and behave like an athlete, has he abused his body too much outside of the Probably. ring with the, part, the partying and the sloth and in the ring just taking shots to the dome to be able to actually whip his body into shape? Look, that last fight, he took a lot of punishment in that fight. And I don't care how strong your chin is, how strong your will is. And Chris Ariola is a tough, tough See guy. It. But the body will break down, and he's at that stage, I think, where one solid shot from Wilder, I think that's it. And so there you have That's the PBC in El Paso this upcoming weekend. On behalf of Michael Montero and Doug Fisher, this is Steve Kim saying, till the next round, goodbye, everybody.